Yeah, so just like yesterday, today what we're going to do is look at the graphs of hyperbolas. And you should be able to graph that hyperbola given the equation. And you should also be able to write an equation given a graph. So just like we did with circles, just like with ellipses, you're going to do the same thing with the hyperbolas. All right, so what we're going to see here is you're going to notice that the equations that we work with today are going to be very, very, very similar to the equations that we saw yesterday in our ellipses. So if you take a look at this equation right here, you'll notice it's very similar to the one we just got through working with with the ellipse. And you all see the only difference between that equation and the one we saw yesterday. Where's the difference? Hmm? Look at the equation we had yesterday. It's minus. Notice right here, instead of a plus, we have a minus. That's the only difference here. And that one little difference gives us a whole new graph. Now instead of getting an ellipse, now we get this shape over here called the hyperbola. All right, so that's going to be the major difference in the equation today and the equation yesterday. Now, you'll notice that this particular graph here, it opens up sideways or left and right. And that's going to happen as long as the equation is written like this right here. That graph will open up left and right if the equation looks like that. But if you look over there to the right, you'll notice that the equation is slightly different here. Can y'all see what's different about that equation and the first one we just saw here? Yeah, notice where the negative sign is this time. Notice how the negative sign is in the front rather than in between the two terms. All right? And because of that negative sign being in the front, now what we have is the graph opening up, up, and down. So instead of opening up sideways, now it opens up, up, and down. The center, the center of these things are going to be the same as the center of our circle and the center of our ellipse, and that's going to be H K. H K. That's going to be the center of our ellipse. That's the center of our circle. And it's also going to be the center for our hyperbolas. Everybody in algebra two. Along with the center, we're also going to be finding what we call the vertices. And to find the vertices on this first equation, we're going to have to do h plus a comma k and h minus a comma k. This is how we're going to find the two vertices, and we'll get a little more detail on that here in a second. To find the vertices on this other equation, it's a little bit different here. To find these vertices, we're going to do h comma k plus b and h comma k minus b. And the reason it's different is because these vertices are in different spots. The vertices on this equation are right here, to the left and to the right of our center. But the vertices on this graph are above and below the center, which is why we're finding them a different way. We're also going to have something called co-vertices. Co-vertices represent or are referring to these two points right here. And the way we're going to find those two points is by using h comma k plus b and h comma k minus b. Over here on this other graph, these are what we call the covertices. And to find those covertices, it's going to be h plus a comma k and h minus a comma k. So again, it's different. Because the co-vertices on the first one here are above and below the center. The co-vertices on this one to the right are to the left and to the right of the center. So we're going to have to pay special attention to what the graph looks like, what the equation looks like, in order to find these vertices and co-vertices. Now as far as the asymptotes, 
go, you'll notice that there's two of those. And those asymptotes are these two lines right here. Remember, earlier we said the asymptotes are the lines that we get close to, but we don't actually touch. And the equation for those asymptotes are going to be y equals plus and minus b over a times x minus h plus k. And it's going to be exactly the same thing for this other graph. Y equals minus B over A times X minus H plus K. That's a lot of stuff. Am I expecting you to uh, memorize all of that stuff? No. When we have that test next week, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and give you a formula chart that has all of this information on it. So you don't have to memorize all of this, but I do expect you to know how to use it. So. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use this. So we may have to refer back to this page, flipping back and forth. So just keep this page handy. All right, now let's get started. Number one, they've given me a graph. And from this graph, I want to find a few things. The first thing we want to find is the center. So if we look at this graph here, we want to know where is the center of the graph. What is that point? What's that order pair that? Zero, zero. zero. Write that down. Zero, zero. The next thing I want to find is A. A is that horizontal distance. It's just like yesterday's ellipsis. What is the horizontal distance? The distance from the center to this vertex over here. Two. That's the horizontal distance. B. B is the vertical distance. That's going to be the distance from the center up to this point up here called the coverts. And what is that distance? Three. So I know where my center is at. I know what A is. And I also know what B is. As long as I know those three things, I should be able to come up with the equation for that graph. But we're going to go ahead and find a few more things before I get that equation. So let's find a couple of other things. What I want to find next are the vertices. And the vertices are these two points on the graph. These two points are called the vertices. What I want to know are what are those two points? What are the ordered pairs? What are these two ordered pairs, guys? Negative two, Negative two zero and two zero. Those again are called the vertices. Now what I'm going to find is the covertices. The covertices are these two points here. The ones above and below the center. So, what are those two points that I've just plotted? Zero, negative three, zero, negative three and zero, positive three. Those again are called the covertices. I also want to find the equation for the asymptotes. Alright, so I want to know what's the equation for this dotted line and what's the equation for this dotted line. Well, let me start with the line that's going up here, this line right here. What I want to know is what is the equation of that line? Well, look at the slope. What is the slope of this dotted line right here? If I go from the center to the corner of this little box over here, we went up, up 3, and over 2. Therefore, my slope is up 3 and over 2. By the way, what would the y-intercept be on that line? Zero. So the equation of this line is y equals 3 over 2x. Now you'll notice the other line is going to be very similar. This line is going down here. What's the equation of that line? Well, what's the slope there? Negative 3 over 2. And notice how the y-intercept is also zero. So the two equations that we're looking for are y equals 3 over 2x, and y equals negative 3 over 2x. These are the equations of those lines called the asymptotes. All right, so now let's come up with the actual equation itself. The equation. Remember I said to write the equation, you basically need these three things right here. So since the center is 0, 0, I'm going to start off with an x squared and a y squared. But this is not an ellipse, so I'm not going to use a plus sign between the x squared and y squared. What I'm going to use instead is a minus. By the way, what is this going to equal to? 1. 
We're not quite done yet, because underneath this x squared and y squared, we're going to put something else. Remember, the equation said underneath the x squared, we're going to have a squared. So what do I get if I square my a? 4. And underneath the y squared, I need to square my b. So what do I get if I square my b? Not. Therefore, the equation of this graph would be x squared over 4 minus y squared over 9 is equal to 1. That's the equation of that graph. All right, let's try another one. Let's try b here. We're going to do the same thing. Now, notice this graph is different. It doesn't open up sideways. This time it opens up, up, and down. So if you look at the equation we had, we said because it opens up and down, the negative sign is going to be in the very front rather than in the middle. We need to keep this in mind. The negative sign is going to be in the front. All right, so let's find some things. Let's start with the center. What is the center of this graph? Three negative two. A. What's the horizontal distance? That distance right there. One. And the vertical distance. The distance from the center up to my vertex. Three. Now, really and truly, if I wanted to get the equation right now, I should be able to do it just given that stuff right there. But we're going to find a few more things. The vertices. The vertices are these two points, the points that are actually on the graph. All right, so what are those two points? Three and one, and three, negative five. Those are the vertices. The co-vertices are these two points right here. And what are those two points? Two, negative two, four. Now, as far as the asymptote goes, here's what we said we were going to use for the asymptote. It's y equals plus and minus b divided by a times x minus h plus k. So that's what I'm going to use to find my asymptote. Here it is. y equals plus and minus b divided by a. Well, b is 3, a is 1, so 3 divided by 1 is 3. Parentheses. x minus h. What is our h? h a. What is our h? 3. So inside parentheses we're going to have x minus 3, and then at the end here it says plus k. So what do I need to add? What's our k? Negative, negative 2. I need a negative 2 back there. Now, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that. But if we wanted to, we could always go through there and use some distributive property and get that into slope intercept form. Okay? But for right now, we're going to go ahead and just leave it like that. We're going to finish this up by writing the equation of the graph. Now remember I said, as long as we have these three things here, we can go ahead and write the equation. So let's write the equation. By the way, notice how we said it's up and down, so what do I need to start with? Negative. And in the first parentheses, I'm going to have x plus or minus 3. Minus 3 squared plus y minus, actually it's going to be y plus 2 squared equals 1. What about underneath my x minus 3? What do I need under that? What's a squared? a squared is 1. And underneath my y plus 2, I should have a naught. And that's because 3 squared is naught. Therefore, this is the equation of this graph that we were given. That's the graph. All right, I want to look at one more thing here, and then we're going to call it a day. And that's on the next page. On the next page, they give me the equation, and I want to come up with the graph for that equation. So the first thing we're going to have to find is the center. Where would the center be of this graph? Three, negative one. Three, negative one. 
3, negative 1. It's H and K. So let's find 3, negative 1. It's right here. That's 3, negative 1. The next thing I'm going to find is the value of A, my horizontal distance. What is the value of A? 4. How did you find 4? There you go. Square root of 16 is 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to move 4 to the right. And we're also going to move 4 to the left. These points right here are called the vertices. What are those two points? What are the ordered pairs? 7, negative 1, negative 1, negative. Again, those are called vertices. Now we're going to find the value of B. What's the value of B? 3. So what we're going to do now is from the center, we're going to go up 3, and we're going to go down 3. Which gives me two points. What are those two points? 3, 2, 3, negative 4. These are called the co-vertices. Co -vertices. Now yesterday when we found these four points, what we did is we went ahead and connected those four points to make our ellipse. We're not going to do that today. If you look at D here, it says we're going to use these vertices as midpoints of the sides to draw a box. So what I'm going to do with these four points is I'm going to draw me a dotted box just like this. All right, so that's what we're using the four points for, to create this box. Now, why do we want that box? What is the purpose of that box? Well, with that box, it's going to make things a little bit easier for us to graph those asymptotes. All right, so E says what we're going to do is through the corners and the center of the box, we're going to draw our lines. These lines are going to be our asymptotes. So from one corner to the opposite, of course, that's also going to go to the center there. That's going to be one of the asymptotes. And then if I go the other way, that's going to be my other asymptote. Now notice everything that I've drawn up to this point has been with a dotted line. And that's because we haven't actually graphed the hyperbola yet. These are just kind of guidelines to help us draw that graph, which is what we're going to do next. Now that we have our guidelines, now we're ready to actually graph it. Now notice here, notice that that negative sign is in the middle. And because of that, our graph should open up left and right. And it'll look something like that there. So when I graph this, notice how my graph comes close to the asymptotes, but it doesn't touch. But also notice how my graph touches the vertex. So it looks just like this. So those are the two branches of my hyperbola. So all that dotted stuff is just to help us guide us in the right direction. The actual graph of the hyperbola is just the green stuff. And that's the two branches. So that is the graph of the equation x minus 3 squared over 16 minus y plus 1 squared over 9 equals to 1. All right, we're going to stop right there, and we'll finish up the rest tomorrow.